Good afternoon, folks. Hey, Brandon, how you doing? Hey, guys. <clears throat> hey, Brandon, I booked some time on your calendar tomorrow. Yeah. I wanted to uh, try to invite my partner. I wasn't didn't see a way to do that. Uh, would you be able to do that if I uh, send you his email? Yeah, I, did. I think you emailed me that, didn't you? Um, I'll check. I think so. Let me... Uh... I'll tell you in two seconds here. I think I thought I saw that come through yesterday. Okay. And I'll add them in there. Uh, there it is. Bob, you talking about Bob? Yes, sir. All right. Great. Let me, uh, I'll throw them in the Google Calendar right now. Okay, James? You got it. Thanks, buddy. All right, buddy. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> buddy. Everyone. Hey, hey Nini. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. Good morning. Hey. Hello, everyone. Tim. Hey, Tim. Hey, guys. Guys, I'm taking care of a couple of housekeeping items. So uh, we'll just have a, a little open networking session uh, until we're ready to get started here in a couple of minutes. Okay. Sounds good, Jim. Sounds good. Hi, everyone. Hey. Hey David. hey, David. How are you guys? Good. How are you? Good. I feel like this uh, schedule is going to be better for me. I might be able to make uh, more of these. I think I, I missed uh, the past uh, handful, at least. Yeah, it'll be better for me too. I'll be well. I'll be on half of them on the computer and half of them on the phone. But good, good. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah, Fridays that was kind of a tough time, but I was able to make them. But it was it was a decent time. But I know everyone can't really make that time. But it's whatever, you know. So I wanted to ask you guys uh, why uh, Friday was a bad time for everybody. Because I'm thinking to start a meetup at that time and if it was a bad time, so <laughs> no I'll, wanted to take I'll, that time. I'll tell you mine, it, I, like overall it was fine, but it just by Friday and I have two kids and uh, by that time it's just like, just around like having to take care of them, it's after school and everything. And they're kind of tired of me being on calls by Friday and my wife is too. <laughs> so I'm, I'm mad you stole uh, my, your, my your words are my words i mean it's uh that's what it is kids and, and the family stop yeah, I, was, I was hitting the nightclubs and the bars and all the discos that was, that was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm the opposite trust me <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was gonna say that too like going to too many nightclubs but no nah, i'm just kidding i don't even do that <laughs> <laughs> Funny, we, we used to when we were kids he couldn't keep us out but i think about it now it's like oh, god no <laughs> who wants yeah. to do that <laughs> yeah yeah i know i know <laughs> so I, I i'm thinking that you know i'm uh, i didn't schedule anything this friday so i'm just thinking not to take friday to pm slot maybe pick some other day um so maybe like an early i think early afternoon friday i don't know if like there are other meetups going on at that time but maybe early afternoon like three or four probably a good time or for everyone else like i'm flexible so it doesn't really matter to me before or after um brian briscoe's because he's 1 p.m eastern 
And I know quite a few people go to his, so maybe like before or after his might be a good one. Okay. Slide. Probably after for you, Vinky. You're a left yeah. coast, you're west coast. Because, here. yeah, I'm in California. And the other thing is that kind of runs into the work hours for people. Most of the people, if you wanted to invite outside people to network. Yeah. Uh, if it's during the work hours, so it has to be um, in the afternoon. So Friday, usually people call a day around 3 p.m. in California. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, but that's like later uh, for everybody else. I have to pick some yeah. other day, maybe. Mm. And Vicky, your meetup will be geared more towards uh, passive investors or? Yeah, that's what I was thinking, you know. What do you think about that? Yeah, you, I think, uh, you know, I think the time for a brace coast is a good time, generally speaking. And uh, I see what Hamad is saying, but do you really care if a lot of the people that go to br uh, brace coast come? Because you're more targeting passive investors anyway. So, That's true, but, but it's kind of open to everybody to, you know, whosoever wants to come. And I just feel like we have a bunch of syndicators already in place. A bunch of people are looking at a bunch of deals and trying to uh, do good stuff. So it's time to do some capital raise because if we have the money to take these deals down, that's how it's going to match up all the efforts. I don't know. That's what my thought process is. But again, I'm open to hear everybody's mindset, what they think. or Good thought process, for sure. Definitely need more passive investors, the better. So I can give you a rundown, Vinky, on the uh, poly that, uh, that we did for the meetup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, for the days of the week, Wednesday was number one, but it, um, you know, I didn't break it down into percentages. I just broke it down by number. We, and I think we, we had, uh, roughly 30 people, uh, that responded and we gave them the option of picking more than one. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Wednesday had 14 votes, but Monday and Friday both had 11. So uh, I don't think that Friday is necessarily a bad day. Uh, and I know for, you know, the thing is you can't find uh, a consensus that's going to be good for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can see that uh, based upon uh, the number of people we have here today, all we basically did was swap out some of the people. So some of the people are here today because this was a good time, but some of the other people that were on, we lost. So we didn't have a net gain, at least not for the first meetup. Um, so uh, with that said, the hours uh, that were popular were the most popular was uh, the 11 to 1 with seven people responding. Uh, and then the 1 to 3 had five people. 3 to 5 had four people. The five to seven only had one person. And the seven uh, to nine had three people. So the 11 to one time slot, uh, or we could say the um, literally the 11 to three time slot um, combined would have been what, about 13, 14 people. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, that time slot seems to be a little more popular, but again, um, the seven o'clock time slot, you know, had three people. So I, I don't think that uh, you can pick a great time or a great day and really uh, nail it. I think that you have to gradually build the uh, viewership, you know, as time goes on, you just have to keep pounding away at it until it starts to increase a little bit. I mean, look at Daryl's uh, meetup. Uh, when I first started going to that one, I thought, man, this is a horrible time. I'm not going to be able to make it. Uh, it's going to interfere with my day. And now Daryl's getting 70 people, you know, his meetups as big as Brian's or as big as um, Julie's. And so I think that's a testimony to just continuing to, to keep at it. Uh, I will say, uh, you know, there's a lot of argument, I think, for Friday night is leading into the weekend, especially if you have kids. It's, um, or <laughs> if you're like Jim and some of the others, you know, interfering with your uh, bar hopping time. But uh, so, it, you know, if, if any day of the week had more challenges, 
I, I would say, you know, that would be the one, but, uh, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily, you know, just discount it. If it fits well for you, we'll eventually drive traffic there. Okay. So, Thank you. And with that said, um, I, I want to, before we really jump into the, uh, um, uh, well, no, we'll do it backwards. We'll jump into the topic of the day, uh, which is websites and domains. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, Hamad to, to kick it off because he had some real challenges this week uh, that everyone may or may not have uh, heard about. So uh, I'll let him, uh, let him share what happened and uh, how he overcame that. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so what, uh, just for people that don't know, I kind of, for some reason, my site crashed uh, and then I could access it as long as I was on VPN or uh, on like off my hotspotting off my phone, but I could not directly connect to my website either front end or, or back end um, through just going normally through my ISP. Uh, so that led me into trying to figure out where the issue was, spent hours with at and who's my service provider, uh, with multiple different levels of uh, tech support, um, no issues there. Uh, spent some time with my hosting company, WordPress, to a point where I ended up having to delete WordPress, trying to figure out where the issue was, um, and then switched hosting companies because I had no support from uh, the hosting company I was was, which was Domain.com. Um, I, I, you know, I got the uh, hosting service when I got my domain name. The, for some reason, the name I could only get from Domain.com because they owned it or something along those lines. And then they had the hosting service, so I just set it up there, but. Um, in hindsight, I probably should have done some research back then to look at which service is the best and where the support is. Um, so I've now I've switched to Hostinger um, as my hosting company. Um, I went through some of the big names there, um, like it was a Bluehost and um, a few of the other names. I just uh, the reason I ended up. Uh, uh, going with them is um, in the reviews, they had better support uh, service uh, ratings versus some of the other uh, companies there. They have um, free CDN, which is basically um, your site gets hosted on like this uh, server uh, all over the world um, and it makes your site a little bit faster. Um, and then what else? Um, it's basically, yeah, it's, it's just the services they offered were much better than some of the other ones that I saw. And uh, the biggest thing I was looking for was better support um, as well. And uh, all their hard drives that they host on are SSD based. Uh, so it should improve uh, the speed a little bit as well. So but now I don't have any issues I can get in through my ISP and everything. So it was, uh, the issue was with the hosting company. That was the issue in the end? Well, I still, like, I can get into the site now that I've, like, the domain name itself is still with domain.com uh, because I don't have to switch that over. Uh, so I just routed it so it switches to uh, Hostinger now, um, and it's fine. I can get into my ISP and everything. Ahmed, this is Keish. Yeah. Uh, do you have SSL set up? Uh, sorry? Do you have SSL? Is it secure? Uh, the SSL is on there as well. Um, I believe, yeah, it's showing me that it's secure now. So, awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah, and they do have free SSL as well. Although I did buy SSL from domain.com, I have to go back and see if I can do a return on it or refund or whatever. But um, this SSL came free with the uh, hostinger. So I, I want to uh, also comment uh, and, and give a shout out to both uh, Keish and Tim. Uh, they both were very responsive to <laughs> Mod's uh, cries for help. Uh, I can imagine uh, I would have been absolutely in a panic. So I appreciate you guys uh, lending a hand and lending a voice. Uh, my, my biggest question, uh, number one, everyone, uh, if you have them, um, you know, uh, so as not to forget, you know, feel free to tap them into the chat uh, and we'll let you, you know, ask your questions. But I know if I don't ask mine right away, I have a tendency to forget it. 
But uh, my biggest question was who else did you consider um, and why uh, at that, you know, after you had trouble, before you chose um, the one uh, Bluehost? Um, actually, I switched to DreamHost first uh, because when I read the reviews, it said they had, um, you know, uh, good support and service. And the other one I was considering, um, there are actually two other ones I was considering. It was uh, Site something, I can't remember the last name, and Bluehost. Um, Blue, um, Bluehost reviews I heard were really bad customer support. Uh, that's why I didn't go with them. Um, and between the site one and uh, Hostinger is just uh, the reviews were better and the price was better with Hostinger. That's why I went with them. Um, I actually, so I actually switched to DreamHost first. And when I went into their customer service, trying to contact them, it was, you could send them a message but if you wanted like live support, you had to pay $10 for it. So I decided to cancel that right away because I didn't want to get into this whole mess of not having support again and then having to pay for support. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm an absolute uh, newbie at this stuff and I don't know uh, whom else on the call may have a lot of experience with this or not. So uh, I would be interested in having a discussion about um, what is what uh, what are the differences between your uh, your host, your uh, domain, um, and um, you know how how those pieces interact, and who's doing which piece, and and uh, the things that you the kind of the the ABCs for the first and second graders uh, on the call like me and anybody pipe in that uh, has expertise in that. Okay, I can chime in here a little bit. I have a question, Hamad. When your hosting went down, did you lose any, anything, any data? Or it was just basically accessibility? No, it, it was more accessibility. Um, but what I, in, um, I just, uh, in, to figure out what was going on, where the issue was, I did. One step I did take was delete my WordPress to see if that was the issue. Uh, for me, all I'd done so far was the main page, um, right? And I didn't want to get into an issue in the future where I had my entire site built and I'm running into this problem. So I wanted to uh, problem solve it at the base for where the issue was coming from. So one of the things I did was delete WordPress in case it was the IP being blocked off in WordPress. Now I did look that um, was it HT access, um, I think it is uh, where you can check if an IP is blocked and it wasn't blocked there. Uh, so just to rule out stuff, I did delete WordPress. Um, and the backup I made um, saved everything that I had within the Elementor plugin, but not uh, a couple of the other plugins I had. So I had to redo it. Um, it took me about a day and a half. I've rebuilt the main page now um, already on Hostinger. Um, so I wasn't as concerned about that because I knew I could rebuild everything um, on the main page because I'm getting used to using Elementor now and everything. Um, so yeah, I, I did, uh, from deleting it, I lost it, but uh, it was more an issue with accessibility more than anything else. Uh, and then, so, sorry, the other thing I want to add, the Hostinger, they also back up your site um, as well, where my previous provider was not backing up uh, that. Can I um, can I answer Jim's question? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Jim, <clears throat> your domain name is going to be the name that like uh, you create, such as uh, um, if if you were focused on Andrew Brow. See how his name says Andrew at CrestworthCapital.com. Yeah, I get I get that you're buying the name from them. Right. I'm more interested in what else. Uh, goes along with that. So I understand oh. the, the piece that you buy the name from them, but what else, like for instance, with Hamad, they also not only sold you the name, but they also gave you the hosting ability. So I, I want to uh, make sure that everyone understands the difference between, there's three pieces here, as far as I can tell. You've got a place that you have to buy the name from, yeah. but you also need to have a host Correct. And then you have a site builder. And right. sometimes 
the all three of these can be in one place or two of them can be at one place. Um, you know, so you, your domain name might also have hosting or your hosting might also offer domain names. Correct. Or your, uh, or your site builder may offer uh, hosting and some, some other pieces there. So I, I think there, there's so much mixture of these things that people don't necessarily understand what each one of their specific roles and duties are within that piece of it. Right. So when Hamad got locked out, um, there was a lot of chatter about you know the, all the different things that might be. Right. And I think that uh, if we have a better understanding about what each of the pieces are, yeah. and the domain name is the, the easiest one, but as far Correct. as I can tell, everyone that sells domain names also has a hosting piece. And, and then there's the email piece. You know, so all of these pieces to me get jumbled up into one big thing. And you don't know um, how to track down problems and you don't know when you might be better served to separate some of these pieces into different companies. Yeah. So that's, that's the piece that I, I'm seeking some clarity around for somebody okay. that can uh, explain it to a third grader. So, yeah, that's, so, that's if, a, so if I'm your sorry. site goes down, right, the first spot you're going to want to check with is your server. Okay, why is my site down? I'm going to call my server and I'm going to say, is there a problem with the server that my site is down? Now, what does the server do? The server pushes your page out to Hold the on, world. Girl. You're saying server, but that we haven't mentioned that in any okay. of the oh. terminology. That, that's ho that's hosting. That's your okay, hosting. Let me let me go back. Okay. Let, me, let me retract. I'm going to retract all of that, everyone. <laughs> Erase that from your memory banks. Okay. Erase what? <laughs> the, the, uh, good. Exactly. So, exactly. So, your page, the, uh, if your page ever goes down, the host who is pushing that page out to the world to see, if your page goes down, the first person you're going to call is that host. Excuse me, host. My page is down. What's going on? So he may say, oh, the, the, the I have to, now I have to stay, say it. But he may say, okay, we're down right now. But we will make sure we're working on the problem. We're going to get that back up. Okay. So once the host gets your page back up, you're back out to the world. But something feeds into your host, right? And what feeds into your host is one, your domain name. So you're going to register it. And then you then that domain name, when you go to your host, if you could get it all, say like in GoDaddy, right? If you go to GoDaddy, you could get it all in one. But you have to see if, the, if GoDaddy is going to be able to service every single piece of what you want. GoDaddy is pretty big. They may be able to do it. They, they have done it for me. I've, I, when, my serve, when my page was down, I would, I would, call, I would call GoDaddy what, while my page down. We're having a problem with a particular thing. I don't want to call the name because I told you not to remember that. No, it's okay if you say server, as long as I know that means server okay. means your host. Okay. So, so once, so really the pattern is domain is going to domain, you register it, it's going to be picked up by the host. The host is going to push it to the world. The builder is going to help you build what's being pushed to the world. And if they could do all of that in one spot, build your page, your site, and, and have it looking all beautiful and and flashy and everything, you have a fantastic website. And that's how it works. Uh, may I add something more? Dale? good explanation. But I wanted to break it down to more concrete things and explain to people who do not understand uh, how it actually works and what each piece is and what they provide. So let's start with uh, Jim, uh, Jim, you mentioned three things. You mentioned domain name server, DNS. You mentioned hosting. You mentioned email. So let's start with DNS. DNS is the name name service or server. 
basically every time you go to somebody's website, you want to call, uh, you want to create a website called mywebsite.com. It basically, the name, the domain name server or service associates that particular name with an I, with IP number, IP protocol number. Basically, you basically are registering your name in a global registry of names. So let's say Daryl wants to create Daryl.com. He goes to some provider that provides DNS name uh, services. He finds um, a name if it's not already taken with .com, .co, meaning it's international. Uh, there are so many extensions you can use, utilize, and you can register it. So um, let's go and talk about .com, .co, .net, .org. A um, couple of things I want to mention. Those uh, domain um, extensions uh, have different um, have ded they're dedicated for different things. If you want to identify uh, a government site, it's .gov. You probably know it. If it's a network, it's .net. And they've been recently added more and more domain extensions. Now, what's important is that every time you register for domain name, you basically come up with your name, you put your information into the domain name registration. So they can find your personal information. They will find your home address. They will find your name unless you pay for a specific, um, I forgot what they call it, but you can basically hide uh, your name and your specific address. It's not shown to everybody. Usually it costs a little bit extra. And with some domain extensions, I believe as .us, um, it's not as easy. I don't believe they actually can hide your uh, registration address, you know, your physical address where you get, get bills and all, all of that, the way you register. But something you want to look into. So when you put and create a domain name um, for your site, make sure you're adding this extra security feature where they cannot pull your physical address, your information, and start soliciting you to create a website or sell you some, some service. It's just a waste of time. So this is what the domain, domain name uh, service does. Um, and every time you register it, you have to also select where your website is going to be hosted, where it's going to live, the actual code that uh, draws the website. It's called hosting. So hosting is, is a total different animal. And there are companies that have DNS or the name, name service and hosting um, provide as one package, or you can buy them separate packages, or you can have DNS with one company and hosting with a different company. It all depends how you want to do it. Um, and the hosting is where your website lives. Um, that involves the actual code that Hamad had to deal with. And when you register a DNS and you have your, your hosting, you have to basically go to the DNS registration where you register your domain name and you have to point to the host. Otherwise, uh, your web page will, not, will be rendered. Nobody will ever see it. So that's not a piece that you have to keep in mind. Somebody either has to assist you with that or you have to know how to do it or have great Googling skills and find that information um, through the DNS provider and hosting provider because they will usually have different means and ways to do it in DNS and hosting has to be matched. So let's transition to the hosting. Hosting also has different ways of um, responding to requests to render your page. That can be as HTML, it can be FTP, that can also be requests for email. So typically, uh, some hosting sites also provide something called cPanel. Uh, that's what my um, host provider provides. The cPanel, it's a framework in which you can do all these great things, managing your hosting, your email, your FTP, whatever, you name it, um, as either a subdomain, basically, well, we'll get into subdomain in, in a little bit. Or um, you can basically have the email hosted through the cPanel. Basically, cPanel uh, um, allows you to configure and create uh, web addresses and you can look at your hosting um, folders where you actually host, where you have all the actual files that uh, show your website or represent your website, your WordPress and all of that. 
Um, it also allows you to install specific tools um, to, to create your website or to register your website. That might be some kind of a builder. That might be some kind of a, um, a tool. For example, you, are, you know WordPress, but there are many other tools that will help you render your website. That can be um, Bootstrap, um, um, some J scripts and so on and so on. There are many, many other ways. So cPanel is kind of like a tool and a framework to, hope, to be able to manage and let you manage your hosting capabilities and features. Now, you can also buy something additional uh, as what they advertise as a private email, um, like Google email, they will help you connect that. Uh, honestly, I personally didn't find that helpful. I actually go through my um, host through the cPanel and that's where I create my email addresses and they actually create it with the extension of my website. Basically, if it's whatever, cm.com, it's going to be, you know, my name at cm.com, for example, right? Um, so let's talk about the subdomain. What is, what is, what is subdomain? So let's say we have a website, website uh, daryl.com, right? And you want to access that cPanel. So instead of saying daryl.com slash cPanel, you would say cPanel dot, that's the name of the subdomain. And then you would do uh, um, daryl.com. So it's something that uh, prefixed before the actual name of the site. That's called subdomain and you can have multiple subdomains. Now, um, the hosting, is secured by, as you all know, by cert uh, uh, SSL certificates. And those certificates get installed on your host, they get installed in your DNS. So you definitely need some help figuring out how to do it with your host. And uh, you need all the tools because hosting, as I said, it's not necessarily just HTTP requests, basically to render your web website. It can be some other requests to access your email or it can be access your FTP site on your hosting uh, site. And um, if you're gonna use any subdomains, that prefix name has also, it also has to be signed with that certificate. Otherwise, if you're sitting in some corporate world, um, you're not gonna be able to access it because corporate world, they have firewalls and actually check where and who is trying to request a page from, web page from, and they check the certificates. If the certificate does not match the actual website, so you're trying to access a subdomain and it belongs to a particular domain, they check the certificate and say, well, that subdomain is, doesn't have any certificates, it's not registered, I will not let you render it. So in some places I've seen that it actually happened to me. So um, in my case, I had to get a wild, a wild card certificate that would allow me to uh, access all the subdomains as many as I want on the first layer, basically the first prefix before the actual uh, domain name. So that's basically in short about domain name servers, services and hosting. Jim, can I ask you a question? Please. Uh, but, um, I'm, we did it pretty simple. I, I guess it's simple. We bought our email, uh, james.verisco at freshpointproperties.com through Google, Google Domains, Google Suite. And we also purchased our website address, freshpointproperties.com. And then we transferred, we, we chose to use Squarespace to build our site. So uh, we transferred, I guess it, it transferred our uh, information from Google over to uh, Squarespace. There was a construction period as they called it. And then my site got constructed and then I went in and started to build the site. So, so Google is our uh, domain, uh, Squarespace is our uh, host in that case, correct? Mm -hmm. So we, d we did two of the three. We bought the email and the domain from Google and used Squarespace as our host. Uh, pretty much sums it up, correct? Yes. Okay. So I'm, I'm just gonna chime in here because I know there's so many thought processes and so many things. There's so many pieces involved getting your website built as well. And by the way, uh, thanks for the breakdown, Tim. And uh, I think I would rather go to one shop that gives everything. 
so that I'm not worried about it, you know, because I have other important things to care about or worry about to get the deals going versus the website is just like a media business card that you have it on the web, people go there, maybe download your book, maybe sign up. That's what it is, like showing them, hey, I'm Vinky Lumba, reach out to me kind of thing. So I use GoDaddy. GoDaddy is a full suite. I paid like $500 for the three-year contract, for the hosting, and for the domain name, and for the SSL as well, because they do have a security layer as well. And we need the security for our websites to protect our data and the information that we are collecting. And also that brings our site up, it gives a better rating. And if we do not have the security feature in there, your site won't pop up unless you know somebody knows the exact address for your website. So um, I don't know, uh, after looking at everywhere, all the sites, I felt like GoDaddy is the best and gives you uh, two websites for the same price. So I have this website and my other website that's under construction that's uh, a nonprofit site and uh, it's under all that 500 bucks for three years. Yes, uh, Vinky, great point. And let me uh, bring up these two very, very important points that you brought up and Hamad brought up. When you're getting this, um, and I know I started that way, I was trying to find the cheapest way to do this. Um, you know, I'll save maybe a couple of bucks here and there. And at the end of the year, I might be saving 20, 30 bucks. Um, but uh, I realized, and I did a very, very, very good thing. First, I, I didn't sign up for an entire like five years or three years. I signed up only for one year. I wanted to check it out. I wanted to uh, see what kind of response I'm going to get, uh, customer support, and what I was going to say. Let me just drop this first. Very important to have a great customer service that will respond to you and will solve your problem within the same day, within a matter of hours, um, without you having to Google for 10,000 articles and read through them and try to figure out how it works actually with your do domain name service and with your uh, hosting and all of that. So you have to have a great customer service. That company has to have a great customer service. Second, um, you have to have everything in one place. When everything is in one place, it's easier to deal with deal with it because if you have dns in one place and hosting different and you're trying to solve a problem like hamad had well uh you're gonna spend twice as much time because you have to figure out what why is it i mean is dns is actually up i mean are there any issues why it's not connected to the hosting and then you have to talk to the hosting to figure out what's going on there what hasn't been configured to, you know two different companies so, um, thank you. I, and I would like to, I would like okay. to add so, one more thing here. Uh, I'm sorry you were breaking. I would like to add one more thing. And the other thing is the backup. Like Hamad, he did not have a backup for his site when his site went down. So whatever he paid, that was kind of hosed. He had to start again from the scratch. Good thing that he was able to uh, save his template and he was had some kind of, you know, um, back, uh, not the backup, like bare bones to start with. It's a lot of work, a lot of effort that he put together. So GoDaddy gives you backup as well. Like your site is down, like Daryl's site went down, and then he might have gone back to day before or week before. You can pull that one up, bring your site up, and right. you're able to make changes on the fly. Like uh, Tim was talking about the cPanel, but again, that depends. Yeah. Uh, you know, what tools you're using for your site. It could be cPanel or it could be WP admin or whatever it is, right, uh, according right. to that. So let me also add to what Winky said, backup. Backup usually is automatic if you use WordPress. Uh, there are some tools that will do it automatically. Um, there could be some additional things you could do with your hosting that will uh, automatically, automatically back it up. But typically um, learn it and apply it. Every time you do a change to your website, create a backup, back it up. Every time you put a change and you push it up to the host, back it up yourself, create a backup, zip it up, you'll have it. Um, I, something I, I've done before. So just basically make sure you create a new zip file every time you upload it to the host. That way, even if the host for some reason doesn't back up, or something else happens, you're always gonna have it stored somewhere locally. Um, speaking of GoDaddy, uh, 
I've heard good things and I've heard bad things. Do your own research. They, I mean, one year they're good, another year they're, they're bad. Do your own research. There are, com- there are plenty of companies out there. Make sure you're getting one of the top most rated companies out there. It's going to be easier because they're rated on everything. The customer service, the speed, and, uh, and complexity uh, um, management tools, what additional tools they provide. I mean, basically that. Just read people reviews. So, Tim, uh, from what I'm from what I'm hearing so far from everyone, it seems to me that um, we've got two different uh, crowds here. We have a crowd that um, has a, a good understanding of all these pieces and can, uh, you know, choose to. Um, create a custom solution, uh, you know, one piece here, one piece there. But I'm also hearing that if you're new to this or, uh, or if you don't have a deep understanding of it, that uh, the simplest thing uh, for all of the pieces that are involved is to find a single source solution where all your problems uh, and all your pieces are housed in one place. So I think that's probably what we should concentrate the conversation on because people are interested in trying to figure this out uh, if they're here having this discussion. Um, And and so I would be interested, I've heard GoDaddy uh, has an all-in-one solution. So who else uh, is using some other all-in-one solution or uh, or has uh, any other input on that idea? I've had, I've used Namecheap all these years, uh, they've been pretty good. They solved issues for me. I'll de- I, I will tell you one downside to that. There is no phone number. I can't talk to them on the phone. I have to chat them, chat to them. But uh, if the person cannot solve the problem, who answered the chat, they transfer me automatic. I don't do anything. They transfer me over to somebody else who does it. And they've solved for me pretty serious things that I, I probably would have spent maybe a couple of weeks trying to find. They have some expertise, they did it. Um, they also have discounts and just like everybody else. So to me, I mean, that was back then it was the no brainer solution. So I'll just uh, add one thing, Jim, uh, from what I've seen is uh, pretty much all of them uh, give you that opportunity to have everything in one place, like email hosting and the domain name. Um, It's more just, again, for me, from my experience, it's the customer service that's the most important. And if you can get your problem solved, if your site does go down or anything. So I think it's important here to pause and say, what does all in one mean? Because from what I'm hearing, correct me if I'm wrong, that does not mean all in one. In other words, you still have to have uh, someone uh, or some platform for building the website. So whether not it's really. a Wix or a WordPress or not, 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 let me just catch up on Wix really quick because I want to say that I didn't want to forget. So there are platforms like Wix, and for those who are not familiar, basically it's a platform where they will host it, they will let you build it, and they will do the, the name registration, basically your name registration with them. The only downside to that is that they own it. You want to buy it, it's going to be a separate cost, and you're going to have to I don't know if you can actually take it out and with the whole process, but that actually what stopped me when I was researching this years ago. And it's like, well, uh, I'll find another solution. Now, going back to the tools, how you can create it, all these tools, for example, cPanel, why we brought up C- cPanel and we talked about it because it's a framework in which you can do many things. You can also build the website or you can build it outside. There are templates outside you can buy pretty much really, really cheap, anywhere between $20 and $60, $70, a template that has pretty cool um, uh, dynamic scrolling. And, you know, they they work with all kinds of tools and all of that. Um, All you need to do is just change the wording and maybe put in your images. Um, But everything is already there. You have templates for the icons and all of that. 
if you're good with um, actually doing this kind of work, you can go that route. But I've tried going that route. I am a developer. I'm a software developer. I've done this thing. I didn't want to waste my time on it. I hired somebody else to do it and they couldn't do it. They, it took them time to figure it out. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to hire somebody and let them develop from, from scratch. I'll just tell them what I like, what I don't like, and let them do it. It just saves me a lot of time. It costs me a little bit more money. Absolutely. But I don't have that headache. I, I can concentrate on other things. So Tim, did you use Upwork or Fiverr or some other platform to uh, find the person to do that for you? So I, I searched, I found a couple of people in Upwork and um, they were eligible to do the work. Guess what? I found the templates, great templates. And I even found a developer who wrote these templates and I contacted him directly and he could do the job. It was actually my fault that I didn't follow up and I just like, I, I don't have time to give you all of this right now. So I skipped that and I went to professional developers that are developing that are working on my other site right now. Um, they're doing all the work and I'm basically telling them what I want and what I want. I don't want. I'll, I'll let you know how it's going to work out. But if you find a template, you can certainly contact that person who created the template and offer him the job. Usually it's not a lot. And they, they create these templates overseas and you know they might charge you upwards of couple few hundred bucks, I don't know, uh, just to substitute the images and put your wording in. But professional companies, they get these texts, the copyrights, uh, and then they know what has to go in these pages, what typically goes there, or they can sell you pretty much something that they already built on before. You'll just change a few words here and there and you're good to go. But don't forget one important thing. Your investors go to your website they evaluate you based on your website. So if you think that website looks okay, that's what your investor is gonna think about you. So make sure it's good. You don't have to polish it to 100%, but make sure it looks good, it's professional and to your liking and probably would be liking uh, to the liking of your investors. So um, let's, uh, let's pause and, and have a kind of a question and answer. There's a couple of questions that are in the chat. Uh, Kish was asking, Hamad, how much did your provider cost and did it include WordPress or did you have to pay extra? No, it includes WordPress and I paid, uh, was it 200 for four years? Okay. Um, any, anybody else have a question? I just let everyone know I have a hard stop at uh, the top of the hour. Uh, so I'll probably hard stop us um, a couple of... Uh, uh, well, hard stop at the top of the hour. So, any other questions? Yeah, I got a question. Uh, Vicky, did you uh, did you use anybody for your website, um, for your GoDaddy website to design it? You know what? I did hire somebody initially to do my website, but then I didn't like it and I kind of did it myself. But somebody put the skeleton on for me. Okay. So, did you I just pick you up from what they had already done, Vicky, and built onto it? Yes, basically, um, I think the best way to do it, that's what me and Hamad, we were talking uh, earlier to this week, that get somebody at Fiverr, they'll build your basic website for $40 or $50. And if you need me to connect you with somebody, I can do that for you as well. And then get that going. And then as you go on, either you can pay them for $10 a page or something like that and get the additions done. And or you can do it yourself if you are tech savvy a little bit. Yeah, I, yeah, I they usually options. charge you ten dollars, twenty dollar per page, and depends how many pages you have according to that. And I think that's the cheapest that you can get on the fiber. I did the opposite. I, I started working on my website, and I'm like, oh, I don't like everything how it I don't like how it looks. It looks real, real plain Jane. So I that's why I'm gonna hire somebody on Fiverr to help me out with it because I, I did some stuff, but it just looks so plain Jane. I'm like, I don't, I don't like it. I'm like what Tim was saying. Hey, uh, Aaron, I. I'll just give you my experience. We, we were at this conversation a month ago with our, our team. We wanted to put a website up and I've got a couple other businesses where we've spent some pretty good money building the website because they're very interactive and they're sports based. But this one, like we wanted it to be a shell, like a business card. And we wanted to be very budget conscious because we're just getting going and we don't want to sink all of our time and capital into this huge website that really no one's going to go to yet. 
So we wanted a nice shell. So what we did, similar to what Tim was saying, is we went on GoDaddy, we bought the URL, we bought their certificates. They're pretty much, you know, it's going to cost you two, three hundred dollars a year if you get everything in order. We went online and Googled WordPress templates. And I just found the template that I thought would fit the best, went to upwork.com, went through my process of hiring the best people at the best cost. We got the website all in. I think it was four hundred dollars and that included any Mac, any amount of pages we wanted, any updates we wanted. Um, I think we're all in on it for 500 bucks with literally probably an hour's worth of time on our end. And that's the biggest thing. If you're going to try to build your own website, you got to think about the time it's going to take you. And then you're going to build it out and you're going to go, man, I don't really like that because you're not a web developer and upwork.com. There's thousands of people, really good people that will do it. Um, for for 500 bucks all in on everything and they'll make sure that you're set up with ssl cpanel godaddy the all-in-one one-stop shop and most of them will not let you go until you are completely satisfied with everything that you have and to this day even this this web developer that did it for us months ago i still can communicate with him any questions i have or any updates i have and he, he's right there with me. And that's just a matter of choosing the right person. So that's just our experience. And again, just to reiterate, just remember time is so valuable. And there's Brandon, people out there uh, that can do it way better than me. Thank you, Brandon. So, Brandon, can you share that developer's uh, contact info on Fiverr? Because I, I've actually gone through two web, web developers now. I actually started as Jan 14th and, you know, to the points you just made, I didn't want to spend the time. I wanted someone to go in, uh, two, three weeks, be done with it. Um, I provided all the content, everything. First one was garbage, second one was garbage. I spent a lot of time vetting out and looking at their prior work and everything and still just didn't get what I was looking for. Uh, so I'd love to get, uh, if, you're, you know, if you're good with the work uh, your developer has done, I'd love to get their contact info because I'm kind of struggling with that. Um, and what I will add in hindsight also is uh, I totally agree with everything you said, but at the same time, I'm glad I've gone through uh, the amount of time I have spent on it because I, I can pretty much do anything in there because I can set up all the links with my active campaign and pop-ups and all that. So if there's anything minor, I can go in quickly and make changes to it and uh, fix it up. Uh, that being said, you know, I just talked to Binky a few days ago and um, my plan right now was just put it together and then give it to somebody on Fiverr to clean it up and make it responsive and everything. Yeah, um, Hamad, I'll be happy to share that. I just shot you a direct message. Just send me your email okay. in there and I'll share it. My guy's on Upwork, but something I didn't reiterate was I know how to go into WordPress and make updates. And it's really WordPress and what we use is very, very simple to go in the back end if you need to change a link, add text, add a logo. Uh, I wanted to make very clear that I didn't want to have to reach out to this guy on Upwork for any little changes on the website. So he, he was able to, to train me up before he let me go on, here's how you go in and, and make all your adjustments. Yeah, uh, that's what I would recommend for everyone too. Is that, and it was fairly easy to learn it on my end. Um, you know, there's enough uh, sources on YouTube and stuff to figure things out too, so. Yeah, but that's gonna, uh, that's gonna take a lot of time. Time that, that we could be devoting to, to finding properties. I, I used to do that. I, it's just like working, I, you know what that's like, everyone? It's just like working with your underwrite, going in to mess, to change the cells, to get the numbers to work. And if you're not good with Excel and making those numbers and changing it and adding this, that, and the other symbol, you're gonna you're gonna spend a lot of time. That's my personal opinion. My personal opinion. No, no, I and I totally agree with that. Um, and that's why I'm saying it's good to know it. I mean, it's up to you, right? Like if you're good with this stuff, you can pick it up easily. It's better that you figure it out just because you want to wait for a day or something like that till your site is back up if you need people going to it or you know people are going to be going to it that's the only difference right like if you know how to do it you can quickly go in within five minutes and fix it up or change it and then you're done 
that's the only reason I'm saying it. I'm, you know, for me, it's, it's good if you know. If you don't know, just make sure you have someone that. Oh, any other recommendations or best practices that uh, uh, someone has from experience uh, that's done it before? If you use um, Apartment yeah. Pro. Go ahead, go ahead. Apartment Pro. Go ahead, Jeff. I've used Apartment Pro. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, I've used Apartment Pro. I've hired people on uh, Fiverr for one website. They did They did a great job. Um, I. It's all WordPress. I uh, bought a domain, um, GoDaddy, and then uh, cheap, cheap, uh, cheap name, I think it is. Um, and I used um, Bluehost to host my website and my email because uh, some some host, hosting companies don't do emails, which I was surprised to hear about that. But uh, so I had to get um, a hosting company. So I hired Bluehost for one website and then uh, Apartment Pro hosts my uh, my website for the multifamily side of things. Um, but they provide you a template where you could go in there and just kind of make it your own and it's they're focused on like apartment uh investors so that's also another option if you don't have enough time and a little bit of capital to throw at it and then you can hire somebody on uh on uh fiverr to go in there and make the changes that you want and uh they, they'll tell you hey what kind of uh um uh software what kind of you know things like uh after campaign that you want to add and see if compatible so that's one thing you want to look into what kind of uh what kind of programs you're going to use before you purchase the uh, type of uh, uh whether it's uh wordpress or whatever wix um also wanted to add one little thing if you do decide to go with a template route and you want to find those templates, uh, make sure that those templates, and they usually have comments, they'll tell you whether they're being updated uh, occasionally because you, you usually can buy a single template or maybe a, a package that will be constantly updated and you'll get the updates um, because they do have bugs occasionally. So you'll get the updates, there's some kind of support, it'll say what kind of WordPress or that particular development tool is used version of it. So uh, make sure you, Keep track of those things might be very helpful for you yeah so um another thing i wanted to add um to jeff's point i know uh, he said he was using apartments pro um adam gower has his own like hosting service he has like the template the hosting and the ssl certificates with um what he set up for like the boot camp that we were at and um i like the templates are already there so it's like optimized for capital raisers so you just go in there, put your content in there, put your logo in there, and then just link it to your your host and your domain name. Then you got something to push out there. So like it's already ready to, to go. I think the biggest challenge for me personally is just coming up with all the um with all the content. Like that's like the biggest challenge. But other than that, everything's all set up, ready to go. Just gotta put your content in there and then automate it. So that's that's what I'm working on doing right now. So me and Keish, I think Hamada was in the bootcamp too. So that was what um, they were doing for his website. So yeah. Benny, is there access to that if you didn't join uh, the bootcamp? You weren't part of it. Yeah. So um, I think um, the website is gowersite.com. Um, it costs forty nine dollars a month. Uh, so that like adds out to be like five hundred thirty a year. It's pretty expensive, but I mean, you got everything. So you just gotta put your content on there and then you're, you're good to go. Cool. So it's pretty convenient. And I actually posted the videos for the uh, training um, on the platform. So you guys Great. have access to that as well. Great. Anybody else has any questions, comments? Yeah, I think uh, we're going to call it a day, guys, uh, because uh, I've got to jump to uh, another meeting. And um, we'll uh, hopefully have a good topic uh, like this, a lot of great input today. I really appreciate everyone being here. 
and uh, in helping out. And if you have any suggestions uh, for the next meeting or uh, any future meetings, uh, please uh, let us know either me or Vinky or on Slack or email some way, somehow, and let's uh, help each other find some more LPs. Great. All right, guys. Good, Good turnout. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Right, take care.